All right, Joe, we're back at Borough Market. Fantastic. We brought you here because we wanted you to experience an authentic British pork pie. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Mrs. King's Pies. Mrs. King's, okay. Now, the food looks excellent here and it's very traditional. We'll try it now and I'll uh, explain to you a few things that make it a classic right, British dish. Fantastic. I'm freezing. Let's get some hot to eat. Ooh, bad news. What is up, my man? Hello. Could we get two small Melton Mowbray pork pies, please? Grab one of those. So I couldn't have noticed that this isn't hot. No, so these are served cold. Especially if you ask for a hot one at Mrs. King's, there are Google reviews suggesting that you will be yelled at. So don't do that here. But so how these are made, these are Melton Mowbray pork pies. There is a distinction between a Melton Mowbray pork pie and a regular pork pie. To be called Melton Mowbray, they have to follow a certain set of rules. Okay. So a Melton Mowbray pork pie specifically is cooked in a freestanding way. So you notice that you kind of get this like crimping around the top. Yeah. That's because it's not being cooked in a mold. Gotcha. The meat in here is obviously pork. Some pork pies you might see are cooked so they're still a bit pink in the middle, but with a Melton Mowbray specifically, they actually cook it all the way through. So it's like got that kind of like more grayish. Oh, that's what right. it's cooked. Yeah. During the cooking process, obviously because of the fat and the juices that are in the pork, the pork will kind of shrink down. Yeah. So what they will then do is through these little holes in the yeah, top. Yeah, I see injection marks. Little hole, pour some jelly in, wait for that to set. But then that way you don't have the kind of cooked pork inside it like rattling around in the pie. Oh, it holds thanks. it all in place. If I had to say, I've had a guess, I would say this weighs two American pounds. Yeah, it's yeah. hefty, right? I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't know any of these were going to be served cold or room temperature. Sure. But right now, this is like kind of what I was expecting today. Okay. So I'm not excited about like this. Like visually or? Visually yeah. and also this, the horror story of what's inside of it and why. <laughs> you know, and like cold pork. Yeah, it's delicious. Come on, man. All, All right. right, so how, I, think I just bite into it like. We're gonna have to just bite it into it. I mean, you might wanna like, if we had a knife, we could cut it into slices, but. I guess I could kinda. With this one, I'm, I'm just gonna be biting straight in. Oh no, I, sh I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I really wish I didn't do that. You don't want to see how the sausage is made, quite literally. <laughs> All right, cheers, man. Mm -hmm. I love pork pies. I shamelessly love pork pies. I do really like this. There you go. But it's like I'm eating leftovers. <laughs> In the sense that the cold meat, the pastry's nice, but you know, you usually eat pastries when they're still warm. The spice, the flavoring they put in the meat is fantastic. It is what I come to expect from coming to this country, where you guys, whenever you have any meat, you guys are really good with like lots of different spices. I mean, you better be good with spices, considering. Um, <laughs> so that flavor is really good. Yeah, I, I, I went from being completely put off by this, but being like, yeah, I kind of get it. I'll take that. I wouldn't be upset mm -hmm. if I got this out of place, I guess. I will say, usually yeah, I would be eating this cold. I would probably have some sauces with it, I think traditionally, which oh. we don't have right now. I think mustard goes excellently with a pork pie. Also maybe like a chutney of some kind can be really good. Yeah, sauce really hit the spot on this. It feels a little dry, but the meats flavor really well. And I gotta say the pastry, very impressive. This is a hot water crust pastry, very little in it. The meat cooked, seasoned simply, preserved with the jelly. It's history in a bite. <laughs> History in a bite. Okay, quick pop quiz. How well do you know your Cockney rhyming slang? I'm going <laughs> to assume not very. <laughs> not at all. What do you so, got for me? So one of the most famous Cockney rhyming slang yeah. words, which I think has now just become like classic British parlance, yeah. is actually from the pork pie. Uh -huh. So you used to be able to say that you're telling pork pies. And they're telling lies. Selling lies. Pork pies, lies. Yeah, and it's kind of morphed now into porkies. You're telling porkies. <coughs> You're telling porkies, mates. <laughs> right? That's how you say it? Pretty much, yeah. It's kind of morked now. This guy's like, saying porkies, isn't it? Telling, telling porkies, yeah, telling yeah. lies. Yeah. Pork pies. There you go. Great. <laughs> okay, I don't think either of us can finish this because we have more pies to eat. You ready? Uh, uh, yeah, I am ready. Let's go. All right, let's go. So we're at M. Manzi's. We wanted to take you here because this is the oldest pie and mash house in London right now, still operating. Wow. When we're talking about pie and mash here, we're talking about East End pie and mash. It's slightly different to pie and mash that you might find elsewhere. East End used to be the kind of, I guess, more underprivileged area. The food that you'll find here tended to be, yeah, a lot more kind of like the working man's dinners. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's all gonna be really heavy, really starchy. I mean, to a degree, because this is kind of the food that I guess like the industrial revolution was built upon in the UK. This will fill you up. 
keep your fuel for your day of work at the factory. And what's more appetizing than the Industrial Revolution? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Let's eat. All right, man. Is there any sugar? Uh, no, thank you. Are you good? Thank you very much. Hope you hungry. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Get that down. I yeah. have to admit, first impressions, this looks really good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Okay, so Beautiful. this is not what I was expecting at all. The, the, over here, I'm like, what's happening over here? Mm -hmm. All will be explained in due time. Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of how they serve it up. They mm -hmm. obviously make big batches of mashed potato, mm -hmm. bring it up in the kind of dumb waiter thing. And then they just kind of have, it's not really a scoop, it's more like a spatula. Yeah. So they just kind of like spatula some of it and then smear it on the uh, plate to get it off there. Let me say, like, I love when something that was meant to be efficient and, and probably cost prohibitive suddenly turns into like an iconic way of serving it. Yeah. I love that. I think in many ways, this is kind of like London's original fast food, if that makes sense. So I think what you're saying about like just efficiency being yeah. the key is really true. So something else showed up. Of course. It looks like a jello in a horror movie. <laughs> what is this? So these are the jelly deals. They are a very historic dish in London, particularly in the East End. Uh, it does pretty much what it says on the tin. They get the eels, they kind of stew them, chop them up, and then put them in jelly Is to preserve them. No, so these are actually normally served cold. You don't seem in, <laughs> you don't seem thrilled by that. So I would like to fill up with the thing that I actually want to eat. Yeah, it's kind of up to you how you want to approach this. You can generally just kind of like slice at it and wait and see what comes out. So the pie is minced meat, quite a lot of like beef fat content in there, suet. Cut yourself a, uh, a perfect bite and then we'll give it a try. What would you say is a perfect bite? Probably gonna get some potato just, on it. Just a too. bit of everything, a little bit of mash, a little bit of the sauce. Okay, right, let's go. Cheers, my man. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is really good. Oh, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's one of those dishes that has just been perfected over so many years. Yeah. Because everything on the plate works together so well, there's like no wasted space whatsoever. So you might have noticed this green sauce on the plate. I have. This is called the liquor. There's a alcohol in this? So, it's spelled like you would spell, you know, the alcohol, but there is no alcohol in this, unfortunately. What this actually is, is a predominantly parsley sauce, wow. which is a, kind of like a fragrant herbal sauce to have with your pine mash. You'd mentioned something about inside this is also, like it's, I've seen ground beef, mm -hmm. a gravy, and water. Yeah, so um, what they normally do is roll out like a big sheet of pastry, Yeah. cut the little pie dish size yeah, pieces, yeah. put it in there, and then hose it down with water. Hose it down. Hose it down. There's okay. like a hose involved. Oh, yeah, got uh, it. <laughs> this is kind of done uh, for a few reasons. It helps the base of the pie stick to the lid of the pie. Okay. Because these are very much like self-contained pies. Yeah, it was tough to get in there. Yeah, it's like a sealed in little package of meat. Yeah. But then also, it just kind of bonks it out because um, then you're putting the meat in there, but it just stretches the sort of like meat juices and the gravy that's in the pie a little nice. bit further as well. I think this is so fantastic. You're mm -hmm. right. The, gr the gravy, the liquor, whatever you guys are calling it, is so fantastic. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't at least try the jelly deals. Yeah, I think we do have to, if, for science, if nothing else. So, I would eat the whole thing like a sushi roll, just kind of like the whole thing pops right in? I think pretty much just grab, grab a piece, I'm pop looking, it, pop it looking in. looking for the smallest one. I will say it again, Wait. Watch, watch out for bones. Oh, you weren't kidding, I like almost stabbed one. Ready to go. All right. All right, cheers. There's bones in here. Welcome to London, man. Thanks. Big bone. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez, I like an, after, an aftershock there. <laughs> uh, not my favorite thing. Yep, that's fine. It's okay that we couldn't bring you around on the jelly deals, because you do seem to have enjoyed this is the fantastic. pie mash and the I would curries. absolutely kill this whole thing. I think this is so fantastic. Ready to eat some more? Yes. All right, let's head out. Let's do it. Okay, Mother Mash. Mother Mash. We're here. We are. So taking you here because they're really like focused in on the mash as the name suggests, offer a lot of different options here. This is just some really elevated, nicely made pies that we can uh, discuss and try. I, I'm surprisingly still hungry. Yeah? Got room for like two or three more pies? So there's a couple of things that I think we should try on the menu at Mother Mash. I think we should try a couple of like slightly jazzed up mashes, for example. I want to try the cheesy mustard and maybe the horseradish as well. Yeah. Those sound pretty good. And then we have a few pie options. Definitely we want to try the steak and black heart stout pie. Stop. What? 
steak and black heart stout. Okay, it's a black heart stout. Yes. Heard There's... black and heart. I'm just like, hey, people eat anything over here. <laughs> There's no heart meat in okay. this. You're okay. Good. Okay. We're going to try that one because um, steak pies, like steak and ale pies, steak and kidney pies are a really big deal over here. We eat a lot of those. And I think this is going to be a good one to give you an idea of what they like. And then I think we should also maybe try the chicken pie as well. We have chicken, mushroom, and bacon one. I bet that one's actually really good. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. So I've noticed my horseradish here. It looks like they just gave us like a dollop of horseradish on the mash. Yes. Versus weren't you expecting they like would mix it in? I thought they might have like grated and blended it in, but you know, <laughs> it's still there. You can just mix it yourself. It's yeah, fine. perfect. Job done. I feel like we should just cut in and figure yeah, out which, which pie is which. Oh, this, this one is like... Ooh, that's flaky pastry. Yeah, dude, I totally got the chicken one. I got the beef. Okay. Okay, nice. That's all right. We can, we can mix and match. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Ooh. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is very good. This mm -hmm. is really good. Can I get a little switch mm -hmm. for sure? Get, hit that horseradish though. It's oh, not dear. powerful at all. It's like no? the right around a horseradish flavor without being too um, too powerful. Nice gentle, gentle kick. Yeah. It's this. Man, it's just too big of a bite, but. <laughs> no such thing, man. We're professional eaters. Oh, wow. Mm. The stout. Mm hmm. The stout gravy, man, mm -hmm. that's really good. I'm glad I've tried both. I think yeah. I probably do slightly prefer the beef one. I definitely prefer this one too. There's just something about that combination of, I guess the like richness of the alcohol kind of cooked away, yeah. leaving me with this like... Definitely the richness of a stout. Yes. But not so much in the sense of like, it tastes like beer. No, definitely not. It just not. has that stout richness to it. Which and like, it really works with yes. the meat, I think. Yes. The red meat particularly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a nice little yeah. harmony there. It's really comforting. Yeah. How's the, uh, how's the mash? You liking the mash here? The so it's mash kind of, is it's, fantastic it's in, here. it's in the name to start with. I will show. say, so the first place we went to, the mashed potatoes were fine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I probably would, if I was gonna eat that whole plate, I probably would've salted it. I did really like that gravy, but this, these potatoes are perfect, no notes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this, is, this is it for me. This is what I'd imagine it be, it feels like, I know we've been to places that have been around longer, mm -hmm. but if I would think traditionally what I'd expect, it'd be this, and this is, maybe of the highest caliber of what I think you could get in this country. Yeah, I think it's like a very traditional pie, but just done really well, like slightly elevated levels. I think the pastry, I really like the I texture wanna, yeah, I wanna get it. I wanna just do a little bit of the pastry. I think maybe compared to like a Manzi's or something, it's um, not as like thick a pastry. Yeah. I feel like maybe those pies are more transportable, whereas this is very much designed to be like, you're sitting down, you have a plate or a yeah. bowl, you're slicing into it yeah. and eating it like that. If you were kind of carrying this around in your pocket, it's a little bit too flaky, and I think we'd uh, just fall apart. Yeah, you're not getting very far. That'd be yeah. funny to get to the office. Well, from my own pie, just slop <laughs> on the desk. Your keys is like covered in gravy. Yeah. In the oh, Harry. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is really fantastic. I yeah. like the chicken pie. I get a lot of the bacon flavor, actually. I thought there's yeah. like a good amount of bacon in here. Yeah. That like richness, meatiness really does come through as well. I I'm wondering, like, how popular is a chicken pie? with this. I feel like not very, right? They're pretty popular. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and not only that, but they are historic and they've been popular all throughout history as well. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. All right, fine. I you guess want, I was wrong. You want, you want some proof, Joe? Uh, archaeologists actually discovered a tablet in Mesopotamian Sumeria, mm -hmm. which is about 4,000 years old. No, that's old. Can you guess what was written on this tablet? The Ten Commandments? I don't know. Close enough. It was a recipe for chicken pie. <laughs> And this is preserved, like we can translate and we can read this and you can, if you want, make a 4,000 year old chicken pie. Oh, interesting. So is that better or worse than uh, chicken pot pies that you've had in the States? Way better. Like, way better. But I've not had a, uh, a chicken pot pie that even, can even touch this. Okay. Yeah, this is fantastic. That's high praise. Yeah. I really like it here. And this, of these two, that one is, oh my God. Yeah. That is so great. Yeah. I think overall this has been a really excellent meal. This has been fantastic. I love mm -hmm. this place. Good cool. call. All right, but we do still have more pies to eat. All right, let's hit it. All right. Okay, Joe, we're right in front of a Greg's. That's really I feel funny. like we couldn't let you come to London and talk about meat in pastry without experiencing a Greg's. You've never had one before, right? That's right, ever since we started Food Wars, I've been getting nothing but messages from assuming teenagers here in Great Britain who are like, you gotta try Greg's, mate. Well, so let's try Greg's. We're finally making their dreams, yeah. and hopefully yours come true. Up for debate as to whether or not they actually serve pies. It's like meat in pastry. Mm -hmm. We'll have a discussion about that, but I think we're going to grab a steak, bacon, a sausage roll, just so you can experience a Greg's. Ah, let's do it. All right, cool. And I'm going to go in here and see what it's like. 
Joe, I'm handing you a Greg sausage roll. Gotcha. These are iconic. They're like extremely cheap. That's kind of half the, half of the appeal of Greg's is that it's very affordable, yeah. hot and fresh. They're pumping these out throughout the day. Yeah. So you can go in. Mm. You need to give us a try. They also do a vegan one. We haven't yeah. got that one. But Are you going to try it as well? Good. Do you want me to save you a bite? Maybe, yeah, save me a bite. Okay, okay. okay. My I first time ever trying a Greg's sausage roll. I love Greg's so much. Mm -hmm. Talk us through it. Wheels are turning. This is very good. This sausage reminds me of American sausage. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the pastry is cooked really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell that these are kind of mass produced, but still. Sorry. <laughs> Definitely eat it outside. Yep. Flaky pastry. <laughs> yeah, very flaky. Overall, yeah, it's very good. Right. Yeah. And it's like a sort of hot and ready snack for like, it's like a one pound 20 or something. It's really that cheap? It's really cheap. Oh, wow. That. That's gonna, that's, that, the price is nice. You walk into thing. Greg's and you come out with so much food. Yeah, but it's <laughs> and high blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, Switch. we're swapping around. Yeah. Next up, you have a steak bake. Mm -hmm. Be careful because half the experience of these is biting into it and it's like molten lava inside. Okay. So just have a little, you know, have some caution. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go for it, man. I'm nibbling from the other end of this one. This tastes kind of off. <laughs> you might have some angry Geordies in the comments, but... I want you to take a bite of this, uh -huh. and I want you to think of one word. <laughs> and that word is seafood. <laughs> do you want me to taste like that, or do we get an off one? This is how they normally taste, and I do not taste seafood. That's I don't bad. know what you've got there, ma'am. <laughs> Does that not taste pretty similar to, like, the steak filling that we've had before? You're no, getting seafood not really. From that. This, <laughs> this, I don't know. <laughs> but you're going in for more, so you seem to like it. Because I'm like, am I losing my mind? <laughs> you're kind of like doing some work on that thing, man. Well, I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, this I don't like. This I do not like. Um, okay, fine. I so would be, and I'm glad we had this uh, for the show. Mm -hmm. So I was definitely planning on coming to Greg's while I was here. And I'm glad I know that this is terrible and you paid for it. <laughs> But that sausage roll, man, that's really good. That's the one. Yeah, that okay. might be the one to beat. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Do you think this qualifies as a pie? Because it is like two layers of pastry encasing some meat. Yeah, I think pastry with the uh, hot meat inside of it and like a gravy or a sauce. Pie, if it's Italian, it's a calzone. If it's American, it's a hot pocket. Uh, yeah, I'll go. Oh, that's a pie. Well, I'm glad that you've experienced a Greg's. I'm sad that you didn't like the steak bake. Terrible. I feel like in terms of this video, this might not be a favorite, but are you glad that you've at least tried Greg's now? Yeah, I'm very happy with okay. Greg's. And, <laughs> and the flagship one, and wait, Leicester Square? Leicester Square? Leicester Square, yeah. I keep adding the Escher like it's a uh, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Leicestershire. Uh, yeah, okay, great. So I very feel cool. like I got one more in me. Yeah, so we're gonna go straight to M&M's World, and then we'll go get some more pies. Okay, cool. Pie M&M's, so let's, let's go. <laughs> So we're at Willie's Pies. Mm -hmm. These guys only really started kind of in lockdown actually, but have achieved huge renown and success across London. You're intrigued by the filling. Yeah, I saw they got the Rogan Josh. So you have the beef Rogan Josh pie. Uh -huh. I have the steak and Stitchelton pie. Basically, Willie's Pies are known for doing some slightly more like gourmet, I suppose, approach to pie fillings. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't find these on like the average pub menu in the UK, for example. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm excited to try it. Uh, which one do you want to do first? Or Let's uh, start with, I feel like that's a, a more of a main one. That's more of a, more of a fun one, right? You said this is steak and what? This is steak and Stitchelton. What's Stitchelton? So Stitchelton is a cheese, basically a blue cheese. I'm hoping it will pair nicely with the richness. Uh, I think the, the blue richness. Yeah, the blue cheese is a surprise. Yeah? Yeah. Look at this guy. Here we go. That's gonna go in my hands, right? That is a, uh, I mean, like. Yeah, you see, like, the inside there? Like, it's a well filled pie. And I just wanna say for the record, they didn't fill those with jelly, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> it's perfectly, I have no problem with this. No, no issues whatsoever? No. Ooh, I can smell the, you, you smell a bit of the cheese there? Yeah, oh man, that yeah. smells really good. That does smell good, actually. I, I always like it when we get to this stage of the shoot. Yeah. We're always very tired, don't really want to eat pies, and then the food and is in front of us, and like, now, oh, man. I literally feel like I'm, uh, like, what is it, those old cartoons where, like, they, they put the pie on the sill, and it's, and then, like, Bugs Bunny, like, gets it, and he's, like, floating through the sky to the pie, and I'm like, ah. yeah, so I'm ready right, to bite in this. Ready to go? Last pies of the day, let's, uh, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Because you told me blue cheese, I could 
taste it, but I wouldn't have thought, if you just given it to me like straight up, mm. I wouldn't have thought like, oh, and I wouldn't even thought there was cheese in it. All it did was like really excellent the flavor, mm -hmm. give it a perfect savory taste to it. Yeah. By the way, this pastry, oof, this is really good. That's really good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like the use of the blue wow. cheese in here. Yeah. I think it gives it that like, just a bit of something different, you know? Yeah. I think obviously like the steak and stout one that we had earlier, for example, was brilliant, but it was kind of a lot of the same flavors. It's a lot of that like beefy richness, really can I, punchy. Yeah. Can I make an observation that yes. maybe you're about to make? Go on. This place is doing more with the pie than any other place. Other places have been doing is like, this is classic, this is how it's always been done, maybe mixing up a little bit with the classics, but I feel like the attitude here is like, there's so much more to do with, with pies and meat and flavor, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think these guys are doing it, like I say, adding that blue cheese really gives you that extra like funk, that little yeah. bit of like tang and sourness, helps yeah. kind of cut through, because it can be something that's very heavy and very dense and very rich. Yeah. And I think actually, I, almost ironically, adding cheese to that kind of helps it. Yeah, Yeah. that's very good. All right. And then speaking of speaking of innovation, is, pie innovation. Speaking in of pie UK. innovation, speaking of doing different things with pies, this is a beef Rogan Josh pie. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. what makes it Rogan Josh? So a Rogan Josh is a popular curry dish here in the UK. Yes. Very tasty, and obviously they've just taken some of the flavors from that, added them to the beef, and then put it in a pie. <laughs> so it's curry in this. It's like a curry sauce in a pie. Yeah. Which okay. That does seem, sound exciting. Yeah, it does sound. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the honors? Uh, this one already has the other beef on it, so if you want to go ahead. <laughs> You've heard the expression, shall I be mother? No, as I mean. <laughs> so if I was like offering to cut or something or like serve you Because your mom would cut you things like, in your Shall kid. I be mother? All right. I mean, visually, it looks about the same. I don't think I could do a line of, maybe a little more light of day. Oh, now look, and I see, I see a little like a curry green in there. Oh, another real good Ooh, smell. The one. smell though. Ooh. Ooh. Right. I'm smelling like coconut. Yeah. So just Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's good. The curry is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it pairs so well with the pastry, right? It does, yeah. Because right? when you have naan bread, usually when you have a a, a, a rogan josh, like it does have a little bit of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. but it's also very garlicky usually. Yep. So it's almost like that in a bite. Mhm. Mm I like the kind of like creaminess of the coconut. There's yeah. like some like heat from ginger yep. going on there. Very good. I agree. I think like it's almost like a sort of British version of a samosa in a way, because you've got the pastry with this kind of filling in it. That is true. That's the kind of image yeah. that's coming to mind. Yeah. That's really good. The beef is so tender. You can tell they've really like taken the time and simmered this. This whole place has is is really opened my eyes to the fact that uh, you can make a pie with uh, all types of different uh, flavor profiles and you can even reach across to other cuisines and put it in here too. I mean, sky's the limit really what you can do. Mm -hmm. And good for them, good on them for doing that. This is fantastic. These both are very good. They are really I'm good. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Yep. I mean like a Rogan Josh pie has kind of got me thinking about all the other things that I've seen put in pies before. It's kind of like a historical thing in the UK to just put random stuff in pies. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Jeffrey Hudson? I'm, I don't think I know Jeff, no. How about Lord Minimus? I don't think I know him. <laughs> I'm, not too, I'm not too up in my lords. Please allow me to educate you. Uh, Lord okay. Minimus, yeah. aka Jeffrey Hudson, okay. was uh, a small person. Yeah who was presented to the court of King Charles yeah. in a pie. No, that didn't happen, but go on. burst out of the pie, no. wearing a tiny suit of no, armor. Didn't happen. And recited poetry to everyone. C come on, you can't be running up on royalty in the 1600s back then, right? Look, they didn't have TV back then. They had to come up with ways to entertain themselves. Putting people in pies apparently was the chosen option. No, I understand all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the surprise <laughs> is like, that to me is like, get him. <laughs> Right? Because let's think of the other way. An assassin comes to get the uh -huh. king and he jumps down. He's like, I'm going to get you. Like, the king's like, all right, now before we kill you, are you is this uh, for entertainment? Yeah, for fun. Or What's going on here? <laughs> right. As much as I would love to sit here all evening discussing whether or not there was a Lord Minimus, yeah. I guess we have to make a decision about what the best pie in London actually is. Okay. Should we go through the ones that we've had today? Yeah. Okay. We had a classic Melton Mowbray pork pie. Okay. So... Maybe because I went into that thinking that it was going to be inedible. I actually was like, wow, this is pretty good. If I could describe it to an American audience, I will say it's as good as either a the leftovers of a roast dinner or your Thanksgiving leftovers. Now people think that's disparaging, but they even mentioned it in a Friends episode. I think it was the Moist Maker sandwich. That seems like and pretty high praise. Oh, that's very high praise. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed it. 
My only drawback of this, and like not anyone cares what I think, but like it's a lot. <laughs> and that thing was big. I know people go, they look that big, but like that thing was solid. That was hefty. I will yeah. say they're not all that size. Yeah, I was eyeballing it. That was, was if it wasn't two pounds, it's close. Sure. Two American pounds. <laughs> So obviously we had the manzi pie. Classic. Mm -hmm. Felt like I was eating history on a plate. Of course. I was very pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. with uh, the pie, the meat, the filling, everything. All Less right? so with the jelly eels. Yeah, but that's not part of the video, it's right? Fine. Jelly eels are a nightmare, but whatever. I love that bite, that everything bite that you had said yourself is like, it's kind of, you kind of want to mix it together. Ooh, that could change anyone's mind. Yeah, I think I have to agree. It's amazing to like eat a bite of history like yeah. that. It's really good. We went to Mother Mash. Dude, wow. Yeah. First of all, a place that is emphasizing mash, it's in the title, and they have like a lot of different mashes you do not get in the United States. That was kind of like what I was expecting. It's in a dish, it's on top of the mash, it's smothered in gravy, a uh, big plate that's kind of like a bowl. Whew. Did that first bite, the, the, the um... Yeah, the steak and stout. Mm -hmm. wow, and the good. chicken one was no slouch either. No. Uh, really fantastic. Uh, very impressed, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good like standard pie. If you go to a pub, they're going to have something pretty similar to that on the menu. Yeah. And it was done really well. Yeah. Of course we had Greg's. Yeah, I mean. I love Greg's. Yeah. You seemed less sold on Greg's. I liked that. I mean, the sausage roll was fine. Mm -hmm. I liked it. And then what yeah. was the other thing we got? Steak bake. Yeah, it sucked. The fish bake. <laughs> Thumbs down on that. I still don't think I tasted any fish in there, but that's your experience and I'm not yeah. going to challenge you on it. And of course, we ended here at Willie's Pies. I've really enjoyed these. This How about you? This is great. I love the meat. Very flavorful. The pastry of this one, if I was judging pastries, this might have been my favorite pastry. But we got to pick one. We do. Okay. So as the tourist, yeah. if you were to come back to London or if a friend of yours was visiting yeah. and you had to recommend one spot, yeah. which one are you picking and why? I'm going to have to go with Mother Mash. I was, that was the one I was like, can I just stay here and finish it? I loved it, it lit me up. We'd been eating all day and even that one, I was like, whoa. That one just really like awoken me. Uh, what I think this pie is supposed to do is get, get you that, like get you going, right? Yeah. And it was fantastic, I loved it. What was your favorite? I think just maybe because as a British person, I've had a lot more pies. I've had a similar pie to that more often. Whereas I think Willie's pies for me might be the standout just because for me, it's doing something really? new. Yeah. It's doing something a little bit different. And you like that. It's doing it really well. Yeah. I think it's easy to like try new things and make it like gimmicky yeah. or kind of weird. That is true, this would does not feel gimmicky at all. No, like... definitely not. For the seasoned pie heads who want something <laughs> a little bit different, That's right. I think this is great. Yeah. Mother Mash was up there as well. Yeah. I like Manzi's as well. They're all good. That's they're, why... all fan they're all fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they, it's really gonna boil down to uh, while I stay here, ever come back, when I want pie and mash, it's literally gonna be like, I'm going to the closest one. It's all fantastic. They're all good. I think we chose well. We've given you a good cross section, and I hope we've proven that uh, yeah, pies can be a lot of things, yeah. anything you want them to be. Well, thanks for taking me here. My pleasure. Cheers, man. Cheers. There's no way they put that guy in a pie. <laughs> all right, so I'm not budging on that. <laughs>